young black singers, many of whom were plucked from poverty and made overnight sensations. But back then there were few rules when it came to the music industry, and shrewd record company owners could often do just about anything they wanted. Well, the old rock and roll is back, but we found for many of the singers who created it, the music ended a long time ago on a sour note. Bo Diddley and Brooke Benton, legendary black singers from the 50s and 60s, who once thought that with fame came fortune. Let me tell you something about, let me tell you something about that. These people have made millions and millions, and they're still selling songs, and they're, they're licensing stuff all over the world, and I want money. I don't want songs. I want money. I'm 56 years old. I cannot be 26 ever again. Bo Diddley is one of an entire generation of black rock and roll singers who are not being paid for the music they created. Someone can always say, man, I almost got robbed. But I can't say that. I can't say I almost got robbed. <laughs> I got robbed. Fools rushing where angels spent trip. Fools rush in and rainy night in Georgia helped Brooke Benton hit the top of the charts in the 60s. By the 80s, he was broke. Like almost 200 other singers from the 50s and 60s, Brooke Benton and Bo Diddley are trying to undo bad deals made decades ago, often with record companies that have since folded and sold off the contracts to somebody else. To assist them, they have turned to Chuck Rubin, a former agent who tracks down unpaid royalties. <laughs> the artists primarily uh, put their careers in the hands of other people. They trusted other people. And... Uh, Unfortunately, a lot of them put their trust in the wrong kind of people. The black music stars of today don't have the same problems. None of them pick up a mic anymore without first consulting an army of agents and lawyers. Big Joe Turner, the boss of the blues. In the early 50s, he recorded one of the first rock and roll hits, Shake, Rattle and Roll. The song was a huge hit, but not for Joe Turner. Get out that kitchen and rattle those it was covered by Bill Haley, a common practice where black records were re-recorded by white artists so they could be played on white radio stations. Turner is 74 years old and in ill health, but he keeps going, singing at small clubs like Hop Sings in Los Angeles. And his records keep selling, but many of the record companies don't bother paying him royalties. Turner can't afford the cost of the lawsuits to get the money. I ain't got no way to keep up with it. I'm losing a lot of money. And I probably will never get it. Every day I am blue. A lot of Turner's old music is churned out by Atlantic Records. Atlantic was founded by Ahmet Erdogan, who had reason to smile 30 years ago when he signed on Turner. Turner gave Atlantic eight top ten hits in the 50s. Erdogan, still president, refused to give us an interview. Now that's all they sent, Joe Turner. Now, Howell Beagle, a Washington lawyer who loves rock and roll, recently attempted to sort out what he claims are decades of non-payment by Atlantic. Joe Turner, who had Shake, Rattle, and Roll and a number of hits, he got his first check about three months ago, and that was for $4,000 and represented uh, 25 years then of, uh, of royalty payments to him. And the That's the first money he had received in 25 years? Yes. Another of Howard Beagle's clients who recorded for Atlantic is Ruth Brown, the famous rhythm and blues singer of the early 50s. Mama, Ruth Brown, with, with five number one records, had more hits than Little Richard, Chuck Berry, uh, The Platters, uh, Sam Cooke, uh, The Drifters, uh, um, a lot of people. Mama, 
still out there, performing on the road, Ruth Brown can find her albums on sale in the record stores throughout America and almost any place else. Well, actually, this one uh, is a release coming out of Japan, I understand, that I did years ago uh, for Atlantic Records. Put out by Atlantic's Japanese subsidiary, these albums are sold internationally, and all sales are supposed to be reported to the performer. Ruth Brown never received a statement from, I think mean, she got a statement in 1964, uh, and to the best of my knowledge, never received a statement again until 1983. More than just the music, there's the money, a lot of it, because that old rock and roll keeps coming back. The Twist, Chubby Checker's theme song, was written by Hank Ballard, who had plenty of hits of his own while under contract to King Records in Cincinnati. King's president, the late Sid Nathan, made sure that in lucrative areas like music publishing, the legal advice his singers got was also good for King Records. <laughs> See, man, the lawyer I had at that time was also King's lawyer. Also, uh... He had stock in King Records, so you can, you can just about uh, imagine what happened to me. <clears throat> what happened to your publishing rights? Publishing rights? At that time, they didn't allow blacks to have publishing. If you would, if you would go to a record company and leave a missing publisher, man, out the door you go. My hang-up was, I didn't think singing was a job. <laughs> you know, I always thought singing was something that, was, that, that I was gifted with a talent to sing. You know, and being born in Canada, South Carolina, you know, I never thought about making uh, $10,000 a week. Oh, my goodness. As a singer? No. What would you answer to people who'd say, well, you know, you guys were terrific, but uh, that's the way business was done back then, and, and you were patsies. It shouldn't be no patsies. We live in America. There were white boys that got got too, not only just blacks. So when I say that, I don't mean that just me. There are other people that got had the same way, because I know a whole lot of them. You can add Hank Ballard's name to the list. By now, it may sound like a broken record. Ballard's music is still making money, but not for him. When his career slowed down, a friend in the business offered to arrange what Hank thought was a loan. Only after signing the papers did he realize he had signed away the rights to his songs. I was sold down the road, and I still don't have my songs back. First of all, I didn't know any better. Let's put it there. Naive and a little bit uh, not caring. Not caring. Not caring enough about what was going down because I trusted. You have to trust somebody, man. You just have to trust somebody. What would life be like if you didn't trust anybody? I went to the river. Like many others, Hank Ballard is making a comeback, but this time he's singing songs that are often very different from his big hits of the 50s.